welcome back to my channel, Planty Princess 92 My name is Ashley, and in today's video, we are going to repot and divide this monster of a Monstera Deliciosa plant. As you can see, she's gotten quite large. I think when I first got her about 10 months ago, she was maybe a third of this size, and she really has just flourished. I have provided her with a moss pole and her aerial roots really have just taken so well to that and kind of just um, already started to just grow into the moss pole and take over. Um, the leaves have been a lot larger since I've provided it with a moss pole and it has grown, um, it, it's picked up pace a little bit growing um, since I've provided it a moss pole. So they really are quite beneficial. So what we're going to do today is I am going to, uh, one big reason why I am repotting, two reasons actually. Um, there's a reason why I'm repotting it and there's a reason why I am dividing it. So I am repotting this because this plant has been growing yellow mushrooms from the top and the bottom of the soil. Now these mushrooms are not harmful to your plants, but they are very unattractive. They're ugly. Um, they have that mushroom smell to them, which I absolutely cannot stand. Um, and I just hate having them in my plants. Again, they are not harmful. They do not uh, deprive the plant of anything or affect the plant in any harmful way, but they just really are quite ugly. Um, so that's why I need to repot this plant because I need to get all that soil out and these mushrooms occur when a bacteria gets into your soil and that's what makes the mushrooms form. I'm not quite sure how this happened because this has just started happening over the last month or so and I've had this plant for about 10 months but um, let me see I transported this plant uh, today to come to my mother's so they actually fell off of the bottom while I was bringing it over so now they're there's probably some at the bottom of the soil but I wanted to show you guys one but they're they're all off right now um, but again, so I need to take all of this old soil out and when something like this occurs, normally when I would repot a plant, I would probably try to recycle the soil as much as possible. Um, now, soil does kind of decompose, uh, deteriorate and lose its nutrients over time. But if adding new soil into it, you can kind of still use some of that old soil, that way it doesn't all go to waste. Now, when something like this happens, I will not be using any of the old soil because it is um, infected isn't the word I'm looking for, but it is has been taken over by whatever bacteria causes these mushrooms. So if I mix it in with my fresh soil, it is just going to continue the process of that happening and it will be completely pointless. So now I am dividing this plant because it is really getting quite large. I kind of want it to stay at a certain size um, for the area that it's in because it's doing really well in that spot in my home. So I'm dividing this to keep it at a more compact size, but also I wanted to give my mother a piece of this plant to have in her home as well. So without any further ado, let's kind of just jump right into the video. I'm going to go grab a garbage bag to put all this old soil in and we will get right into it. Okay, so I got my garbage bag and I'm going to throw all the old soil in and we will just get right started. This is a bit of a big plant. I have my mother on standby over here in case I need assistance getting this beast out of her pot. Um, so some of the roots have started to grow out the bottoms. So this is definitely in need of a repot anyways. So let's see what we can do. And like I said, it has the moss pole, so it's gonna be kind of hard to get out of here. I'm just gently squeezing the sides together with my knees. I'm kind of putting it in between my legs right now and squeezing the sides together to loosen up the uh, edges of the soil. isn't really working. Yep, there we go, here it comes. Can you grab something? Nope, I got it. Okay. 
So I am so surprised there's not any actual yellow mushrooms in here. I can smell them though. So let's kind of see what we have going on here. It is pretty root bound. Oh, you can see all of this on the side there. That's the bacteria. So I'm just gonna bring this up here and kind of just set her in the trash bag to break this apart a little bit. She has a lot of roots, so this is gonna be kind of hard to make sure most of this old soil is gone. But if I can get the majority of it loosened up and out of here, I really think that will do the trick. Um, I could always wash off the roots. That will also help, but it should be, should be just fine if I can get this loosened up as much as possible. I am not surprised how root bound this became though. Um, anytime I repot, if you watched any of my previous videos, you know this already about me, but anytime I repot, I always go through, I remove any dead uh, decaying or yellowing leaves, as well as any dead or decaying or rotting roots. Um, this foliage and these dead roots absorb uh, positive energy from the plant um, to try to repair something that it can't repair rather than focusing, focusing that energy on uh, producing new roots or growing new fresh leaves. So I always make sure that I take off and remove anything that is not healthy or going to take energy and put it to good use for this plant. This is pretty coming apart actually quite nicely, easier than I thought. I'm almost done. So I am going to take this outside and hose the rest of this off. Look at this root system though. I'm gonna bring it over so you can see it up close. That's a lot of roots. This is crazy. Look at that. That's beautiful. There's not much dead or decaying. This is a nice full and healthy root system. So let me go rinse this off, get this looking great. When I come back in, I will show you the roots all rinsed off so you can get a better look at them and then we'll get this divided and repotted. So the roots are all rinsed off and clean and this is what they look like. Again, they looked healthy before, but now you can really see how nice and white and juicy these roots really are. The big thick roots have thinner feeder roots. So I mean, when you talk about a perfect root system, this is really what that looks like. Very nice, very full, very defined. Now let's get this baby potted up and divided. So I have two different pots here. Well, I have three pots. The pot I'm going to pot it in, the two pots I'm going to pot it in, and then a pot that I'm going to be mixing my soil in. For this um, Monstera, I am going to be using just your standard miracle Girl potting mix. Now, since that's a mix, it already has amendments in it uh, because it's standard. I believe all it really has in there is perlite, maybe worm castings if I'm lucky, but I'm really, I'm not sure about the worm castings, but I do know it does have a little perlite in it. This plant, uh, it's not too picky, but it would do uh, much better in a more well-draining mixture. So on top of having the miracle Grow potting mix, I am going to add in a little bit of extra perlite just to keep it a little more chunky um, I forgot to grab my orchid bark from my house. I transported uh, this to my mother's to do this video. That way I could leave her plant here with her, um, as I said before, but I forgot the orchid bark. If I did have orchid bark on hand, I would also throw in a little bit of orchid bark to kind of air it up and chunk it up a little bit. 
because plants really do benefit from um, extra aeration to their roots uh, and oxygen to their roots. So uh, having that orchid bark in there kind of lets a little extra airflow come in contact with the root. But since I don't have that, I'm going to add a, in a little bit of additional perlite to the mix. And because this plant isn't picky, that should really do just fine. Now I have to be careful what I take apart here because some of this is already, um, has already attached its roots into the moss pole that I have on it. But um, I will just have to see what is attached to what and take away what is not already attached to my moss pole. Again, before I repop this one back into my pot, I am going to make sure I thoroughly rinse the inside of the pot because it did have the bacteria in the soil and along the edges of the pot that was causing those yellow mushrooms to occur. So if you don't wash your pot, um, sterilize it, wash it real good with soap, maybe even uh, put with a little bit of alcohol or whatever you have on hand, um, that bacteria could reoccur and you'll have the same problem all over again. So let's see what we have. Now to separate some of this, you may want to use a pair of sterilized shears, sterilized scissors, a sterilized cutting knife, whatever works for you. Um, I am going to use a pair of scissors if I need to cut anything apart. I, I may be able to just pull it apart. Yep, this first one is coming apart really nicely. And each one of these should have its own very significant root system, so I won't have to propagate any of these. This is the first piece I'm putting into my mother's plant. And as you see here, it has a very nice root system already coming off of it. It has one, two, three, four, five leaves. And I feel another node right in here, so that means it will have another leaf coming on the way. Um, I am going to pot um, this into a little bit of a larger pot than I normally would because of how significant the root system already was to prevent me from having to repot this in the near future. So I'm going to set this aside. I already have a little bit of soil mixture in the bottom of this pot. That way um, I can just really fill around this and that will be perfect. I might have to add a little bit more because that's sitting kind of low. Let's see what else I can take off of here that's not attached to my moss pole. We'll go with this one right here. Aside from rinsing off the root system, I also did uh, rinse off the leaves. Um, I gave them a quick rinse. That way, if there was any pest that wasn't visible to my eye or that I was unaware about at this point, that would kind of retreat and help get rid of them or at least slow them down if anything were to be on my plant. So here's the other piece I am going to put in there. Again, a nice healthy root system. We have nice aerial roots coming out of this one. She is going to provide this with a moss pole. Uh, when you have monsteros or really any plant for that matter, it's better to provide it a moss pole or a trellis at earlier stages rather than later because as it grows on and gets older, it's just going to make it harder for you to train it the way you want it to grow and harder for it to attach itself to a moss pole. Um, rather than if you put one in there right away, it just kind of does it on its own. You don't really have to stake it up or tie it to the pole. It just kind of does it all on its own. So now this one has one, two little baby leaves and one, two, three, four, five big leaves. So that's seven leaves all together. So now we have 13 leaves and I really think that would make a cute little plant. Let me pull this over here so you can see what we kind of have here for this pot. So you wanna make sure how you pot them in, you position them the way you would like them. And this really does look pretty cute. I might pull one more out just to kind of, because these are going sideways, I think it needs a little bit more in the middle here. Um, and these plants grow so quick. 
I'm not too worried about missing much from my plants. I mean, it still has a lot to it. So let me see what else I can find that's not attached. I'm just kind of wiggling them loose here because they're kind of all intertwined. But it's really coming out quite nicely uh, that way. I haven't had to cut any roots. So here's my last piece. This one is just a tiny little four-leaf burr, but it has a bright root system, and this will fill in the middle really nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and set this in there. I'm going to make my mixture pop mine back up first since it's really already all put together. I don't have to do much to it. And then we will get the new plants situated. going to add maybe a fourth of my mixture, a fourth of what the mixture would be per light. So three fourths will be soil and then I'll have a fourth that will be the perlite. I cleaned my pot out. It is really nice and clean. There's nothing along the sides any longer. I'm going to go ahead and put the tray underneath that way any little soil does not come out of the drainage holes. And as you all know, I'm sure, and if you don't know, drainage holes are very important when it comes to potted plants, indoor plants especially, because, um, you know, when you have plants potted outside in the ground, it's an ever, uh, a never-ending drainage. There's nothing there at the bottom of the dirt to stop it from, from being surrounded around the roots. Um, but again, here we have a bottom to it, so it will give root rot if it just sits around roots too long. All right. So first, I really want to make sure my moss pole is situated really nice and firm because that is what's going to hold up most of the weight of this plant. And then I am going to fill in around the edges here. I want to tap the sides and make sure that dirt gets down in there. So you don't have any air pockets. Air pockets will prevent some of the roots from getting water um, when you water your plants. you guys are as messy as I am when repotting. I, there is soil like everywhere. <laughs> but I guess it's, it's like impossible to do this cleanly. I'm gonna have to go ahead again and like clean the bottom leaves of this because there's soil all over the bottomest leaves of my plant.
Now, as always, you want to leave a little lip. Um, you don't want to pot it too high up because then it will overflow when you go to water it. But you do want to make sure it's filled enough that it's really packed in there good enough that it's going to be able to stabilize your plant so that's it for this one and we'll go right ahead and finish off the last one After I'm done here, I will always give my plant a nice watering um, to give them some water, uh, help them transition from the repot, as well as help their roots uh, adjust to the new soil. This one will be a lot easier because there's no moss pole involved. And again, a fourth will be perlites. This is a pretty big pot, so I'm just going to dump the rest of this in and it'll mix as it gets watered because that's not too much. This will be a lot easier for this plant. So I am, because it has more room, so I'm gonna take a shortcut. And again, I need a little bit more, so I'm just gonna top it off with your standard soil. this already has some perlite mixed in and everything that's around the roots already has extra perlite and again as I water this will get mixed in and perlite tends to float to the top so this will actually kind of help prevent that additional perlite from setting at the top of the soil and there we have it So that's really cute. Now, as you get a moss pole to put right in the center, I kind of place these more towards the outer edge of this pot. That way there was room for the moss pole to be in the center. And as they grow upwards, they will tend, their arrow roots will connect with that moss pole and they will uplift a little bit as well as get a little fuller. Uh, and I can always add in a couple extra pieces throughout as it gets bigger to kind of fill it in a little better. So that's everything for this video. I have both my plants in fresh new homes. These lovely girls are going to flourish um, in the next growing season. I think this was a perfect time to kind of repot these plants because Monseras are a little more of a hardy plant. They're not too picky and they will transition very easily and very quickly for this repot. So now they will go dormant or grow very slowly. And then when spring comes, especially because they didn't need to grow any more roots, they will already be established in their pots and they will just boost with energy and throw out leaves left and right. Thank you guys again for joining me in another video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you like the content I provide. And as always, every plant's a princess. Bye.